I hate to break it to you, but hot dogs are legally tacos. What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be going over the best base game zones for profit. Now originally I was going to go over every single ESO zone and how profitable it is. However, I thought let's start with a more refined scope so that way you guys can see which zones are the best for you guys to go out and farm right now. You don't need any DLCs, you don't need nothing. I have taken Isabel into the middle. If you can recognize this zone, good for you. This is Stone Falls because this is on the list. Now, an important disclaimer. This list is in an order. However, the orders are split in two. So there's, I consider it, there's one good set to sell from a specific zone or there's two good sets to sell from a specific zone. And you might be thinking, well, how do you compare, you know, compare, you know, Stone Falls versus Riven Spar? They each have one good set to sell, and that is going to depend on you and your markets. Then, so when you, as a viewer, are watching this, you will watch this, see the sets that are suggested. I'll also point out some specific areas that say, hey, you know, you can go farm it in this zone. This is generally the pieces that are going to be selling. You could take that information and then kind of go to the market with it and see, you know, does your market have a in-depth need for X, you know, weapons or X body pieces, you know, so on and so forth. So that's going to be this video. This video will also not be going over places like the Alakir Desert, which where it is a great jewelry farm, it is just a great jewelry farm. You're not going to be putting on those rings like Sauron and using those to conquer Middle Earth. You're going to be scrapping those to level up your jewelry. Now, the important is, is we're talking about the value of the zone itself, not the things in that zone. If you would like a video, I already have planned to do a video on fastest ways to farm jewelry, fastest way to level up jewelry crafting, and so on and so forth. So that'll be separate in the future, but this has been a long preamble. So where am I currently? And this is Stone Falls. Now, Stone Falls is a bit of an interesting zone because it is base game zone. It's the only of the base game zones that is a starter zone that has a set that I would suggest for you. So what is the set that I suggest for you? And that is the Red Mountain set. Now, this is a set that saw a lot of usage initially for PvP because it, it was very easily combined with other ones like Falcon Scoria for easy burst damage and it is still a really fun little niche set that gets used for PvP from time to time especially just because it can be used every 8 seconds 7120 damage of flame damage is pretty good and this scales off your weapon and spell damage so my character that I'm on right now is definitely built for maximum magicka because it's a sorcerer who needs a lot of shields so the fact that this already would do 7120 flame damage is actually pretty good Overall, it's a great set, and if you were looking to farm inside of Stone Falls, you are the world boss over here at the Hive, because you're able to go into the mine also next to it. I'm not going to pronounce either of those words, because I know that I'll get comments in the comments below. <laughs> I don't need any more comments. Uh, but these are both great spots. It's a world boss, easy jelly farm. Uh, you get a lot of script jelly. Also, because it's the base game zone here, the public dungeon here is absolute baby birthday cake levels of easy. You don't have to worry about any sort of difficulty in this zone. And, and honestly, you'll notice that as a trend as we go down this list, is there's really not a lot of hard zones because we are in the base game, but I always just like to point that out for each zone. But on to the next. Can you guess where we are based on this beautiful landscape? Do you feel Maroon's Dagon quaking in fear? It's a side reference. Maroon's Dagon attempted to invade using Oblivion portals uh, during the second era. He got clapped by some uh, roided out uh, Argonians. Just a little bit of lore knowledge for you. But we are in Shadowfen, and that is because we are here to talk about the Swamp Raider set. Swamp Raider is just an overall great adds 544 weapon and spell damage to your poison and disease abilities. You can see the vitality in using this on a lot of night blades, ganking builds, poison builds, disease builds. Uh, definitely a lot more towards poison builds, but great overall. Again, this suffers from the you know baby cake levels. However, I will say you're probably going to want to sell things more like the rings. 
uh, depending on what people are combining this with based on the current patch. However, I would generally say you're going to find a lot of success more so farming the jewelry for this if you're trying to sell it. But depending on the patch and what people are combining this with, whether it's light, medium, armor, uh, you might also find success in farming world bosses to get to certain pieces of it, of the overland, or going into the public dungeons, for example, to get the other body pieces as well. So body pieces, jewelry, definitely going to see a lot more success than weapons, but overall still a great set. Great area, love the lore of the Argonians, love that they clap Maroon's Dagon, definitely a cool little side bit of lore. Next up, we have our generic elven zone. If you can tell where we are based on this picture alone, you are definitely a lore master of, or one of those people on 4chan who can pick out a pixel of a place and identify who they are. Uh, good for you if you're able to do that. But we are in Malbator. Now, the spinner set was one of the first ever PvP sets that I ever used, and it definitely has a near and dear place in my heart. And that is because of its stats that it gives you. So this is the main set that you're going to be focused on farming in this zone because it gives you 3,138 offensive penetration. Overall, great set, a lot of utility. It's got a great 2, 3, and 4 of Magicka, Magicka, and Weapon and Spell damage. And it also has a really nice place to farm. Now... Where I would usually suggest farming world bosses, however, the public dungeon Crimson Cove is absolutely goaded if you need money uh, because there are dozens of chests in there. You are able to farm Crimson Cove like it is going out of style. Um, and if you are on a console where there's not a lot of spinners listed, it is a very fast way to get a lot of ma a lot of money, honestly, because it's such a good set to use, uh, and it's overall one of my favorites. But we are going to now be going to the final zone that just has one overall good set before we get into the three zones that have two good sets. Ah, yes, Rivenspire, the happiest place on Earth. The place that I had farmed the most when I was needing a Magicka set. What Magicka set, you may be wondering, and that is the set from here named Necropotence. The Necropotence set is probably one of my favorite sets that I still use to this very day. The only thing it suffers from is the it's been out since the base game release, and it is niche to specific builds because it does require you to have a pet active. So it does unfortunately suffer from that, but you could see it gives you a ridiculous amount of Magicka. If you wanted to build a total Magicka build, you would build through this build alone. Using Necropones is the fastest way that you are able to get the highest amount of Magicka. Now, there's some great places to farm in Rivenspire, but it's important to note something, and that is, is that because it gives you max Magicka on the final piece, the weapons are really not worth anything in excess to sticker book costs. What's sticker book costs? That's the amount of money that I will pay to put it in my sticker book to lower the transmute costs when I ain't paying for anything else. Why is that? Why are weapons not worth anything? And that's because you have to put on your front bar and back bar Necropotence. And because it's a PvP set, a lot of times, if you're like me, for example, you like to back bar something like a Potentates, which gives you a damage reduction when fighting other players, or some sort of other arena weapon or other 2-3 to three piece set. And if you use a different one, you're going to be losing Magicka every time you bar swap. Your bars won't be perfectly even, and it will cause you, you know, unnecessary inconvenience when you really want that magicka to be on both bars because you probably want your shields on your back bar your shields are going to be significantly weaker than your front bar so it's a whole lot of hassle to build uh, on if you're using these the weapons for it so my suggestion is is the jewelry and the armor now you might be thinking to yourself where world do i go and find those things and the answer is obviously public dungeons now delves is also a good option too however you're going to get very niche items from there but consider things like while generally shoulders might not be worth it, for example, uh, it, think about what PvP mythicals you may combine with this. Gaze of Sithis, Oaken Soul, you know, things like that. So then you're going to need those obtuse body pieces that not everyone's going to be using, or even like the Marken Ring or Death Dealer's Feet. So when you take into the consideration like that, you're going to need those more obscure body pieces that generally you would you know, use for a monster set. So while the dolems here are obviously great, I also can definitely suggest the public dungeon, although unfortunately, again, the weapons are really not going to be good, and they're just overall delves in addition to world bosses. There's definitely a great loop of those things, but and again, Rivenspire, great zone, one of the areas that I used to get my guild trader in all the time. Very passionate about this zone, even though there's not like an actual market of guild traders anywhere, but 
I digress, because we are now going into the upper half of the list, where these zones have two really good sets for you to farm, and in no particular order, let's head on back. And it takes us into Deshaun. Now, this is going to be a controversial pick, so just bear with me here. But when you consider the fact that Deshaun has two really good sets. Now, Jacob, two really good sets. That's such an obscure statement. People don't suggest these sets anymore. Well, here's the problem. It says that these sets sell. And I don't care how good something is. I care if something is going to sell. If I know that I can sell 10 Mother Sorrow pieces you know, every couple hours, if there's none listed, I'm going to go farm Mother Sorrow. You know, it's not, I'm not, a, a, you know, a, a purist about best in slot. I care about profits. I don't care about feelings. I get that Mother Sorrow is outdated. I get all of that. But you have to understand that people come to the game, they see Mother Sorrow suggested on like 95% of all old web forums, and they think, yeah, I'll go buy the set. And they do. And that's why it, it sells. Like, I, who, who's for me to say this isn't what the people want? Now, Plague Doctor is just a straight-up health set. This is like Necropotence, but without a proc. It's just health, 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 and health. Overall great, very high usage in a lot of PvP activities, especially as things like Hrothgar really started to see a dip in usage. But for people who build health, they go to Plague Doctor. Some of the original or arena builds, like back in the day, used Plague Doctor so that you, if you were going for those... Um, no death runs of like Maelstrom Arena. A lot of people were suggested Plague Doctor. Plague Doctor, I think, is slept on a lot and it doesn't get farmed nearly enough. I think a lot of people toss it when it, it does sell relatively well. Now, that begs the question, well, if I'm going to start selling these things, Jake, you know, what should I be selling? And honestly, the trick is going to be jewelry and body pieces. Now, most people may think weapons are better. However, no, uh, they don't. A lot of people, there's like 99,000 YouTube videos suggesting that you guys farm Mother Sorrow Inferno stats at the Forgotten Crypts. No. The body pieces are good here, and the weapons of Plague Doctor, good. However, overall, not really suggesting any of the other... You're not going to really want to sell the Mother Sorrow weapons, except for sticker book prices. Now, the armor pieces much 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 better and the rings so you can see the dolems and this is one of the reasons why anytime the events come out that you know require people to farm dolems either for xp or monster drops like the halloween event people come to deshaun because they want those rings there's also some really good boss routes i've seen variations of these four bosses here mixed with these two dolems there's definitely a lot of people who will sit and farm lady laurel shelter now we are in another doom and gloom looking zone, and that is Bankrai. Bankrai is again another one of my favorite zones to run during events. You can see, look at this. I mean, just they put these bosses right next to each other. If you actually jump this correctly, you don't even get dismounted in the water. You can weave in an anchor. It's just incredible. Like this, honestly, was my favorite boss farming routes for the majority of events. But we need to talk about, too, what are you going to be looking for? And if you're in Bankarai, it's 7th Legion and it's Spriggans. Now, there's going to be a bit of dispute as to which pieces are the best, and that's actually going to be a toss-up depending on who you ask. Now, 7th Legion is not nearly as farmed and sold as it used to be, same with Spriggans, but Spriggans is basically the stamina version of Spinners, a great set, lots of penetration, lots of stamina, weapon and spell damage. Seventh Legion, you can see, is just overall a really cool item. When you cast an ability that increases your physical and spell resistance while in combat, you gain weapon and spell damage and health recovery. Really cool, a lot of utility. Generally, though, from what I've noticed, it's the Seventh Legion weapons that sell, more so the Spriggan's jewelry. However, that's not a guaranteed science. That's why I suggest farming the world bosses, farm the dolmens. Get the anchors, get out Molog Ball. You could also weave in some of the actual other pieces here too. Like you can also go into this delve here. There's a lot of great ways to do this. The only thing I will say is there's not really an easy delve that I've seen that has a lot of chests. But there is a really nice group dungeon. It is a little tricky to get down here because you do have to progress through the main story mission to get to this other half. However, somebody can TP you to the other side, and you don't have to actually worry about saving High King Emmerich, but he's a pretty cool guy, you know, consider saving him, and then, you know, discovering the secrets to thwart the Imperials. Be real helpful if he did. Support the Dagger of Fall Covenant, the best 
covenant. Unless you disagree with that statement and me agreeing with whoever your alliance is would give me a like on the video, then I agree with that one. Unless it's the Thalmor. That's just objectively wrong. And I apologize if you support the Thalmor. I mean, did you play Skyrim? How do you support the Thalmor? And finally, I guarantee you that the majority of you can tell what zone we're in because we are in Cold Harbor. Obviously, it's a very easy zone to pick out based on how it looks, but what is in Cold Harbor and where should you be going? And those are great questions. Now, the easy answer is Stiggins. So Stiggins is just a really fun ganking set. When you leave stealth or invisibility while in combat, your weapon and spell damage is increased by 335 or 15 seconds. Super easy proc to have when you're stealth, and you'll also notice that there's no cooldown, which means you can have 100% uptime on this with extra offensive penetration with Weapon and spell, weapon and spell is a two and three piece. Overall, very cool. I don't have to type up this set anymore because you can look at it and go, yeah, it's a good setup. The other one, a little more controversial. Uh, when you block, you gain Meridia's Blessed Armor for five seconds, causing you to dodge all incoming attacks. It's going to occur once every 25 seconds. So this set used to be banned from a lot of dueling tournaments because of how trolly it was. Um, I just overall think it's a really funny set. I've noticed that it sells. Uh, decently well. That's why I suggest it for you guys. But I will say though, Cold Harbor is a more finicky zone when it comes to farming. Uh, I've had success farming the world bosses, but every time I've had to farm world bosses, I go from way shrine to world boss, back to the way shrine to the other world boss, back to the way shrine to another world boss, back to the way shrine to the next world boss. It unfortunately is not very consistent. You can see that the world bosses are very close to the way shrines. Um, and there's a public dungeon here also. Unfortunately, the public dungeon, the bosses are very spread out. It's very confusing when you go inside of. But it's definitely worth it, especially for those Stigan weapons. Now, there's other great pieces too. And if you can get jewelry, you'll notice that there's no anchors here or dolmens. Because we're in Cold Harbor, I don't know who would be invading Malug Ball using his own anchors. Uh, but you'll notice that there's no group event here, which means that it is difficult to get jewelry. So if you're going around and farming chests, now the number one chest rod I've noticed is between this world boss around the edges and over to this public dungeon around the edges and back to the world boss. It's one of the number one chest routes. If you're able to get jewelry, you can definitely make a pretty penny off these sets here. So... Keep that in mind when you are farming this zone because overall, it's just a great zone to farm and I think it's definitely one of the best ones for you to check if you're like, man, I should check my market to see if there's a lot of listing. It sells. So I hope this list was helpful for you. Again, this is accessible to everyone in the Elder Scrolls Online. You all have these base game zones. If you'd be interested in a list going over DLC zones, if you'd be interested still in a list that has every zone, uh, from the base game. If you'd be interested in the list that has every, every zone, uh, just don't be upset at me if it's like 20 minutes long. Um, but if that would be something you guys would be interested in, I'm definitely willing to do something like that. But if this was helpful, if I missed the zone, please put it in the comments below because I'm curious what zones did I miss? This is a top seven list. So was, what would you guys have as number eight? Should I have put it on any honorable mentions? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And as a final reminder, before I roll the outro, this is your reminder that if you'd like to be entered into the giveaway, just leave a comment. Answer any of the questions that I just asked you, and you'll be entered in. Uh, we've changed it for this month. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment, or any comment will also enter you also. So subscribers' comments count towards one giveaway pool, and then normal comments, all comments count towards the rest of the pool. So if you'd like to enter, even if you write in a hate comment, you know, enter, you know, just subscribe and, and talk smack. And at least then you might get money from me. You could extort me sort of so you know what better way to troll somebody than to insult them and get you know 17.99 from them so hey keep that in mind when you're debating if you want to leave a comment or not but i will leave that with you and i will see you guys tomorrow bye guys you better remember to like and subscribe to jake clips or you should i might have to pluck your eyes if you don't or better yet i'll skip rope with your entrails do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I will be posting all of my challenge videos to a second YouTube channel, which I will likely be setting up this weekend just to not dilute the ESO content. So that's why that decision was made specifically for that. 
Uh, so if you'd be interested in that, I'll be starting the channel. I'll post it out, obviously, when I have it set up so you guys can go over and view it. I just want to thank you guys for those of you who stuck around to the outro. Um, and uh, just know that I appreciate you. you. After working long, crazy days at CPS and seeing all sorts of headassery and excuses and bullshit and liars and abusers, coming home, interacting with you guys has always been the highlight of my day. And I just wanted to really hit that home with you guys and let you know how much I appreciate you. So thank you guys again for sticking around to the end. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.